Cyril Bertrand. Uh, I'm going to invite him up uh, to come and introduce himself to our very wonderful audience. Thank you, Adele. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, my idea was to, to give you some takeaways. So anyone care for a banana? <laughs> Can you reach back there? Thank you. Um, I'm Harold. Uh, I'm approximately 50 years old now. I'd rather said that early, so I'm not surprised that it happens. Um, I fucked up. I will not tell you in detail what happened, but uh, I tried to explain what I would love to have known before it happened. Then maybe it would not have happened. Um, next one, yeah. So, and actually I took over my father's company together with my brother. The company was running 23 years. So I'm not a startup. And actually, I'm not by choice an entrepreneur. You're being brought up. With six years old, you're being brought to building sites and shown how to measure windows and what doors look like and what the physics on the building is and all that. So in the end, you're made an entrepreneur. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it has part of a, of a, of a problem is there. Um, we ran it for 10 years after that. Actually, after seven years, it already not looked very good. Um, and we carried on for three more years. And then not every ending of a company is your own choice. Some of them are made from others. And therefore, uh, we had to deal with that. OK? Never do business with family. I, I, I would stretch that a little bit with your best friend, with your lifelong partner. If you're not willing to go in conflict with your business partner, don't do it. Business is not friendship. Business is making money. Business is overcoming obstacles. Business is, 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 is finding your way through the tides, through storm, through ever. And uh, it can be very well working. I'm not saying it's not possible. For me, it wasn't. I was always kind of in, in, the, in the midst between shall I say something or shall I not say something. He's my brother. And then comes the shame and blame. Um, you cannot part with your family. Whatever you're doing wrong with your family, it will stick with you for the rest of your life. So you should be prepared if something goes wrong that you can take it. I couldn't take it. I couldn't go for family events the last next five, four, five years. I couldn't go for any weddings in my f relatives' area. Uh, uh, it, it, and even I had to move in place. I, I had to move away from a neighborhood. We were a family-owned business then for almost 30 years or more than 30 years. And the neighbors were looking. You're very strongly in your business community, in your local community. You're doing things people are looking at. And to some extent, on a marketing side, it always looks good, always, even if it's bad. And therefore, people are quite surprised and kind of, before they leave you alone, you better leave them alone. The second takeaway is that your business can never be mature enough to sustain everything. It can go wrong any time. So if you are a startup, you will never reach the point where you never fail. You will ever have to go on. It, it's a, it's a, if, you, if you start a business and you want to make it a success, either you sell it off quickly or you stick with it and you are improving and you're working on the business success all your life. And that's the key for success. If you're let loose, it's gone. Third one, you are the entrepreneur. Whoever is working for you, they are not the entrepreneurs. They are not running the business. They are not sharing your principles. They are not sharing your goals. How good your HR is, they will never be you. They are not inside your head. They cannot think like you. If you're a very good leader, you can bring them very close. And you can have your flock around you. And they're in the same direction. And you have a lot of time invested. And everyone knows where the journey goes. But eventually, 
they have different goals. They want to go somewhere else. And during the, the, the path where walking with you, very strong, committed and all that, and suddenly a lifelong partner goes into their life and off they go. Or uh, they have an opportunity from the competition and off they go. Or uh, they just fuck up their own life. They might fuck up yours if you are relying on them. So you are the entrepreneurs. It's your decision. You have to make things happening. And at one point... That's my personal opinion. It shall not be yours. It might not be yours. It, has to, it doesn't have to be yours, but it's my personal opinion. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. Third one, fourth one. Overview is priceless. Invest in it. Take the money and do the, the, the potentially to, to, to have the outside look. You're your, you yourself. You know what you're doing. You had a good idea, and you have evolved, and maybe even evolved personally during the journey. And maybe you've been better than you've been 10 years ago. But the business outside is changing all the time. So you should take yourself out of business, and that would be the timeout point. You should go off-site. You should go concentrated without any other disturbances. And you should do it very regularly. You have to go through your business plan. Is it still the valid one? You have to go through your success. Is it really a success? You have to go to, through your failure. What can you learn from it? These are the things you really have to do on a regular basis, and you have to do it. You cannot just, I don't have a time for it. It's like, I don't have a time to sharpen my axe. I have to go in the forest to make some wood. That's the wrong, wrong, wrong approach. And again, Make use of externals. Make use of an external third-party few. Pay them money to tell them what's going wrong. You don't need anyone to tell them what's going good. Your bank will tell you. Yeah? Your, your, your money uh, will come in or not. But you need to have that advice from the outside. Why are you doing this? Couldn't you do it different? And how could you even make 10% more, 5% more? Where can you improve? So invest the money to have someone tell you what you're doing wrong. Again, back to the first point, your family will not. Or you're not very good terms with your family. Um, so for us, we thought we, we know it all. And, and, and the banks were nice to us. And everyone was nice to us. Even our tax consultant was nice to us. No one told us what's really going on. And no one really asked those questions. We actually, the, the, my term on that is, and it, it, it happens in a lot of industries like mobile phones and all that, if you cannot convince your customer or your audience, you have to irritate them. <laughs> Don't make them understand what you're doing, they will love you. And uh, that is the point where we are going for the, the, the actually my last takeaway, the second last. <laughs> my highlight of the year was then a letter came in inviting me for the winter training of a car manufacturer in Germany. The first thing, I was waiting for that letter to come in. Before any business letter, I opened it up and signed the document to uh, apply for the trainings. So I was a bit mad with cars and driving on icy lakes in Finland. Uh, so that, that's what kept me going in a sense. And I should have realized earlier that if that's what you're making the business, that's what you're driving, that's what you're longing for, it's the wrong one. It's the really wrong one. There is only one more important thing. It's the family. Not because you're working with family, but you're providing for family. But the rest should be business. If you're not prepared to that, I'm not sure if you will be successful. It's my personal opinion. And last point there. From Winston Churchill, if you're going through hell, keep on going. <laughs> it's no matter to give up on the way. For us, it was a very hard time. To be told that there will be no credit anymore, the credit limits are being canceled, uh, to actually have... Uh, the, the strange thing is, the German translation for the word entrepreneur is Unternehmer. If you translate it back to German, it's undertaker. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, 
to be in the midst of it and to be in a family situation, uh, it's not a nice thing to experience. And uh, that's one part why I'm here tonight. Uh, it's the cheapest way to get 100 people listening to you, like psychiatrists. There's no couch here, but at least it's cheap for me. I don't, I don't have to spend that money. Um, there's always light at the end of a tunnel. So will I do it again? No. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very hesitant to take on risk anymore. That is something which is, uh, I would not be able to, you, you, you missed my, my entrance letter, uh, sentence, did you? It says that I'm a very proud husband of a most awesome wife with the mother of my two kids. And without that, and actually I met her at that period when the, when the business game went down, my family life went up. Uh, so in that sense, um, and I'm really working on to get those takeaways into the business and maybe you ask me for consulting. I can tell you a lot of it, how, how business cannot succeed. In the retrospect, I can also tell you how it could uh, succeed. Uh, and I would like to earn enough money to go back to Finland to drive my car on the icy lakes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah. So earlier in your speech, you mentioned about like how uh, I think I get the uh, fact that your family business uh, it kind of went down and you kind of advised us that uh, you shouldn't start a business with your family members. Was it something about your experience or your business being a family business that caused it downfall? Because I think it's, I mean, we always hear that you shouldn't lose your business with your family members. What was it about your business being a family business? My brother and me are very different. Not only physical, but also mentally. He's the doer, I'm the thinker. I'm not saying he's not thinking, but he, 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 and I'm not saying I'm not doing, but uh, he's rather, let's do it, and I'm rather thinking, let's sit down and do some idea on what could go wrong and whatever. Um, but I'm not thinking we have stopped talking to each other. I think we have not even started talking to each other from the beginning on. He was already 10 years in the company. I was outside the company being the whatever high flyer consulting with Ernst and Young and whatever and came back into the company. So we spread the, 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 the tasks. I was more the, the financial management HR guy and my brother was more of the practical guy on the shop floor. But that doesn't help. Your family, you have to talk, you have to find a, a, a common decision. If you just let some other, your brother do it, then you have to live what he's doing. And that might not be in the same direction that you are going. And suddenly, two things are happening at the same time, opening up the, the, the spread. Uh, you're not on one common path anymore. And the longer that happens, the more you divert. And the more you divert, the less powerful your whole organization becomes. And that ended up in, in, in uh, there are a lot of reasonings for myself. I've tried to go through them over the years, why it really happened. But that is one major point that I didn't have a sparring partner. I had, I had a brother. Yeah. But if, if you're good with your brother and you can uh, shout at him loud and uh, five minutes later you're, you're back in the car together to drive somewhere, it's fine. But if you don't do that, if you're afraid of your father still, then it's already a problem. If you're, if you, if you're too nice to your mother, also a problem. It, business is war in, in some sense and it's not nice. Second question. You said you were from outside going in, right? How, I mean, your, your brother has been there for 10 years. Um, when you give an idea, if your brother says, ah, you're too young to understand this kind of thing. He was 10 years in the company, he's only three years older than me. Uh, so, and, and if we would have had that discussion, I would be fine. We never had. He let go, I let go. The, the, one of the main reasons coming to that point from far. 
Third and last. Uh, why are you crazy about SAP HANA? I don't know what is it. <laughs> why are you crazy about it? Okay, wait a second. Uh, MRT stops at one o'clock. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, thank you very much for that line. Um, I'm not an SAP guy, and I'm not advertising SAP. I'm advertising in-memory database technology. And uh, if you've never heard about SAP HANA, get the internet, check it out. Whenever you have to do something with big data, uh, data analytics, uh, ERP systems, uh, you want to start up a, a, a data analytic company, you want some analytics on your business, whatever, uh, it is a game changer for the ERP world. Um, it's like the iPhone for telephone world. It's, HANA is the game changing, it, it, it's the, the, the core of a change. Everyone else will do it, but it is really a game changing thing. It's in memory, you're running reports in big businesses a factor of 1,000 faster. And that factor is so big, even 100 times faster would be, that factor is so big that it is changing not only that report, it's changing the whole process around it, the way how you do this business. So we, we can talk later. <laughs> Kevin? Is the real takeaway browser good? Sorry, what? Is the real takeaway browser good? To some extent, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, uh, yeah I, I'd rather would uh, fight for an idea than just let it go in deliverance. Thank you. one